Hey guys, Ash here with another week in fragrance. So I've been doing a lot of these lately. Seems like every three or four days, there are seven to 10 new fragrances to talk about. And then I end up shooting another one of these for you guys to let you know what's coming out in the near future. In this video, I've got the Dolce & Gabbana Fruit Collection, which is three new fragrances, each one based around a different fruit. I've got a new Yves Saint Laurent Loam Flanker. I've got a new Abercrombie & Fitch First Instinct Flanker. A new Azara Wanted Flanker. <laughs> three new Carner Barcelona fragrances, and also a new Baldi Sereni Flanker. Yeah, I bet you thought I was gonna say a new Baldi Sereni original release. Nah, it's a flanker. And in case you guys thought there were too many blue fragrances being announced over the past couple of This Week in Fragrance videos, guess what? There are even more blue fragrances here. It's never going to end. Ever. We've got a lot to talk about, guys. A lot of different fragrances. So let's just jump right into it. First off, let's talk about the Dolce & Gabbana Fruit Collection. Now, from what I saw online, these bottles are going to be 150 milliliters, so there's gonna be a lot of fragrance in each one of these, and they're supposed to be available exclusively in Dolce & Gabbana boutiques and at airport duty freeze. So I'm not sure if in the near future these are gonna pop up online where you can order these uh, from Dolce & Gabbana's website or maybe through online retailers, but that's what it's saying as of right now. So if you do travel anytime in the near future and go through a duty free, be on the lookout for these, see if they're any good. So the fruit collection has three different fragrances, each one based around a different fruit. There's lemon, pineapple, and orange. From the brand, the Dolce & Gabbana fruit collection invites you to Sicily and it provokes the love that they have for this special island, its culture, architecture and history is reflected in both the fashion collections and the scents. Yay. Lively lemon, sweet orange, and tropical pineapple. The fruit collection is a playful trio of fresh eau de toilettes. Each fragrance in the collection is dedicated to a particular fruit, even if it hides a complex composition of rare and soulfully processed fragrance essences. Colorful, lively, and expressive, the collection captures the exuberant vitality of Mediterranean orchards and their full bloom and gives the classic fruit scents a modern interpretation. So first off, let's talk about lemon. Yes, fruit collection lemon. Sunny, fruity, and fresh, perfumer Jerome Epinette brings the cheerful and dynamic atmosphere of Palermo's markets to life in a golden pyramid of sweet-scented lemons that have ripened on the sun-drenched slopes of the Sicilian coast. The composition opens with the classic accord of Sicilian lemon and cold-pressed Calabrian bergamot oils, which is enriched with pedigrain oils of the citrus leaves. With a dash of ginger essence that provides a surprisingly sour freshness in the mid, it has in the base the mossy tones of Haitian vetiver oils, which give the composition a woody, earthy finish. So this one has a top of lemon, bergamot, and pedigrain with the mid of ginger, and then a base of vetiver. Next up, fruit collection, pineapple, which may remind some of you out there of SpongeBob SquarePants' house. And of course, since this does have pineapple, in before smells like Creed Aventus. From the brand, this is an exotic fruity gourmand. The pineapple reached Sicily centuries ago, where it soon became a meaningful symbol of handicrafts and architecture. In this fragrance, Dolce & Gabbana and the perfume artist Marie Salamagna capture the sweet liveliness of the pineapple with the smell the taste technology, which is the first time I've ever heard of that, but they have a smell the taste technology, which is, I guess, a little bit different than old school scratch and sniff uh, stickers, but this is like the evolution of that, I suppose. This is an innovative method of capturing natural aromas in a fragrance. Uh, because, uh, as I recall, you cannot actually get pineapple oil and then use that in a fragrance. So when you smell pineapple, it's actually an accord that's been put together to smell like pineapple. It's not actual pineapple oil in the fragrance. Anyway, this has a dash of juicy Sicilian tangerines, which enliven the fragrance along with the note of pineapple in the top. 
while a sunny Sandbach Jasmine note gives a seductively exotic heart. Pure Vanilla Absolute finally brings out the spicy sensuality of an orchid flower with a hint of amber and moss. And then the final one in the collection, Orange. A sublime fragrance of oranges, leaves, and flowers, which mixes with the aroma of freshly cut herbs. To create fragrances from the sun-drenched orchards, Dolce & Gabbana and the perfumer, again, Jerome Epinette, rely on an abundance of the best Sicilian oranges with bergamot, once again, the oil of which is cold-pressed immediately after harvesting. A green touch of fresh basil is added to these sunny citrus notes, while the delicate orange blossom adds a fine honey-sweet hint of white flowers. Under this accord, the powder soft iris forms a warm foundation of amber and musky notes. So there we go, the fruit collection from Dolce and Gabbana, lemon, pineapple, and orange. To me, it reads like lemon would probably be the easiest one to pull off of this bunch, though I don't imagine any of them are really gonna be difficult to pull off, honestly. And uh, of the bunch, I'm not sure which one I'm looking forward to the most. I wanna try all three. Next up, let's talk about the new Yves Saint Laurent. It is a new flanker to Lome. It is Lome Le Parfum. Yes, Lome Le Parfum. And check out that bottle. It is a blue bottle. And according to the house, this formulation combines amber wood and cedar accords, while a touch of citrus adds flavor to the fragrance, revolving into a refined and modern blend. So I'm gonna read through these notes really quickly and just give you a, off the top of my head how it comes across to me. It has a top of lemon and ozonic notes, a mid of geranium, basil, mint, violet leaves, and cardamom, and a base of cedar vetiver and amber wood. So this to me reads like just a, another blue fragrance. I can't tell you guys whether it's going to be a good one or a bad one, just based off of the note breakdown here. It's got a lot of freshness to it in the opening, it looks like, ozonic notes and lemon. Um, and then of course, amber wood in the base, which I've talked about ad nauseum on the channel. Amber wood really kind of took over for Ambroxan as the go-to note in men's fragrances, where again, broken down very simplistically, Ambroxan with the woody type uh, feeling is what Amberwood is. You can Google it for more in-depth information, but that's just a very simple way to think of that note. You also have cedar and vetiver in the base, which are heavily used in men's perfumery, very easily worn, woody type notes, gives a nice masculine feel without being um, too cloying, too strong. And then you've got geranium, basil, mint, violet leaves, cardamom in the mid. So you're gonna have some freshness, some herbaceous pop. Uh, the cardamom, I believe, is actually described as green cardamom. I could be wrong, but I think that's how it's described. So I imagine that this one is going to be a modern, fresh type of scent with a little bit of sweet spice and a little herbal touch. I highly expect that fragrance to be slammed by people that are hardcore into fragrances. And I imagine that uh, your average guy is gonna think that it smells amazing. I'm gonna hold out my personal thoughts until I can get my hands on it and give it a smell. It could be yet another Yves Saint Laurent loam flanker where you spray it on, smell it, and you're like, no, nah, it's okay. And then it just kind of fades away. Or who knows, maybe they finally crushed one and it's going to be good. Next up, another blue fragrance, Abercrombie & Fitch First Instinct Together. This one also has a woman's release, but I'll just be talking about the men's release here. First Instinct Together. Whenever they're together, it's like an adrenaline rush. It's instantaneous, electric, and energizing. It's still him and her, but with the power of both. They cannot deny their first instinct, and they are even better when they're together. This one has a top of grapefruit, green apple, and cardamom, a mid of lavender, orange blossom, and pineapple, and a base of tonka, cedar, and sandalwood. Obviously, the pineapple jumps out a little bit, but that's just because all of us have been trained at this point. As I mentioned earlier, pineapple Aventus, pineapple Aventus. I highly doubt this is going to smell like Aventus. That would blow my mind, but <laughs> it does have pineapple. Uh, other than that, cardamom is probably the most well-received spice in men's fragrance. Easily worn, uh, sweet, very accessible. Grapefruit, green apple, probably gonna have a very alluring, opening, uh, attention-grabbing, fresh, sweet. And then a lavender orange blossom. It's gonna have a clean mid is what it looks like. And then a little sweet tonka, cedar and sandalwood, maybe a creamy sort of base, but yeah. First instinct together, 
blue bottle on this one, it talks about being energizing. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a blue fragrance. Next up, let's talk about the new Azaro Wanted. This one is called Azaro Wanted Tonic. And this seems like a complete departure from the original Azaro Wanted and especially from Azaro Wanted by Night. And it's blue. From the brand, Azaro Wanted and Azaro Wanted Girl are back in the limelight with a fresh and quirky version. Two new invigorating fragrances as athletic interpretations, which are timeless and sophisticated. Azaro Wanted Tonic and Azaro Wanted Girl Tonic. Sporty is the new sexy. But what does wanted tonic mean? Question mark. It means breaking the rules, of course, and never having to choose between sport and style or gym and glamour. It's casual chic elegance at all times. Sporty is the new sexy, but only according to rules set by wanted. Nobody else is allowed to follow these rules. Just Azaro, just wanted. Tonic. So obviously, they're pitching this as a sporty gym kind of fragrance, an active kind of fragrance for springtime, summertime, daytime. Um, but at the same time, they're saying, yes, it's all those things. It's a gym fragrance. It's refreshing. It's something to wear when it's hot outside, but it's sexy too. So that's what they want you to know. It's sexy too, though. And I like how they put the notes here instead of top, mid, bass, sunrise, lime, zenith, ginger, Sunset, patchouli. So they've got those three notes listed as the note breakdown. So yeah, a top of lime, a mid of ginger, and a base of patchouli. Obviously you can't glean too much from that note breakdown. It's pretty bare bones. Obviously that's not gonna be all that it smells like, but those are what they're putting across as the, uh, the more prominent notes in each section or stage of the fragrance's lifespan. It says that this is an eau de toilette for men of explosive freshness with a fearless, style-conscious character. Hmm. It also says that the notes are invigorating. I will definitely check this out. I do like the Azaro Wanted line of fragrances, though I know that some people find it tacky because of the bottle. Um, and then the original Zara Wanted has a similarity to Invictus by Paco Rabanne, so that turns some people off as well. Zara Wanted by Night, I think, is fantastic. Really enjoy that fragrance. So I'll definitely pick this one up, and I am going to have my eyes open trying to spot this as soon as possible. Uh, but this is another one that is going that blue route. We have almost every, <laughs> every designer line, it seems like announcing a new blue fragrance that's going to be coming out here in the next month or two. So every single designer house had the same idea. They were like, hey, get a fragrance ready for spring. Get it out in February or March. Make it happen. <laughs> and that's what is happening. That's what we're seeing here. And if you don't believe me, here is the new Ball Di Serini fragrance, which is not exactly an enormous fragrance house. A lot of you out there probably don't even really know who Baldi Serini is, fragrance-wise, but their new fragrance, Ombre Eau Fraiche. Yeah, an amber fragrance, except wait, it's not. It's a blue fragrance. Baldi Serini Ombre Eau Fraiche transforms the classic masculine ombre fragrance into an elegantly sensual blend of charisma and fresh style. Even the look of the Ombre Eau Fraiche bottle creates curious looks. Hmm. What is hidden in the striking blue bottle? Oh, one thing is certain, it's a mix of mysticism and sensuality. I'm sure that's what everybody says. They, they see a, a fragrance with a blue bottle and they're like, what could that be? What's in there? Probably mysticism and sensuality, if I had to guess. I do love these write-ups. I honestly do, they're fantastic. Uh, Baldi Serini's Ombre Eau Fraiche begins with a dynamic, clear, and very invigorating start of masculine aromatic accords and fresh elements. Watermelon and bergamot greet the wearer and already reveal that the fragrance has a charmingly unusual character. That's pretty cool. Watermelon is a note that is underutilized. Uh, it's not in too many men's fragrances out there. And when it does get introduced, assuming that it's done well, it's usually 
very highly received or very well received. The strong, rich heart captivates the male and underpins it. That has got to be something lost in translation. The strong, rich heart captivates the male and underpins it. Different accords meet in the heart note, different in detail but convincing in interaction. It contains nutmeg and cypress, apple and sage, as well as the playful violet, which gives the eau de toilette spray eau fraiche. That's certain something, eau de toilette spray eau fraiche. Just ombre eau fraiche. That is, it's how it translated, I don't know. Don't. Bass note continues dynamically. Warm, elegant woods ensure a rich and extravagant finish. Now the eponymous amber shows its strong side, accompanied by essences like sandalwood, oak, and leather. That was a mouthful. So this one has a top of bergamot, lavender, watermelon, sage. Again, that watermelon is gonna be probably what jumps out and gets most people's attention. The mid, violet, apple, sage, nutmeg, and cypress. So sage there again, I assume that is a typo. And uh, sage is only most likely in the mid, not the top, but just let that go for now. And then in the base, amber, leather, oak, sandalwood. So you've got a nice uh, strong base there. Some, some notes that typically have a lot of heft to them, uh, a lot of staying power. So this one could be interesting. Again, a lot of people don't talk about uh, this house when it comes to fragrances, but they are typically quite affordable once they hit discounters. And that note breakdown, at least, is slightly different. You know, it's, it's got a little something going on. Last up, let's talk about three Carner Barcelona fragrances. Uh, I don't know as of this moment what the name of this collection is, but it's three new fragrances, and they do have pretty slick looking bottles, uh, which you'll see here in a moment. But I like the way they look. First off, a fragrance named Ibiza Nights. And this one speaks to me. This one speaks to me. I've listened to dance music for decades at this point. I DJed for a long time. Ibiza was always like some, you know, dance mecca or whatever, uh, especially when I was younger. It was like, oh wow, Ibiza, I would love to go there. And now here's this fragrance, Ibiza Nights, which would have really appealed to me. 15 years ago, <laughs> but I'm sure it's still good. Uh, so this one has a top of Italian Mandarin, pear and star anise, a mid of Ylang Ylang, magnolia and jasmine sandbok, and a base of vanilla, Indonesian patchouli, and benzoin. So it does have that floral mid. Uh, it's got, you know, some yellow flowers, white flowers in there. I'm not sure how that would play off skin. It is a unisex fragrance. Uh, I'm not sure if this one may lean a little bit feminine, just looking at that mid, but if nothing else, I'm interested because of the name. The next one up, and if I mispronounce this, you'll have to forgive me, Luco Mori. That's how it reads to me. <laughs> it has a top of Italian bergamot, lemongrass, and grapefruit, mid of pink pepper, blackberry, and rose water, and a base of hibiscus seed, Indonesian patchouli, and musk. And I've got to tell you, that note breakdown, just to me personally, is more appealing. It's got that blackberry, which is a note that I always really seem to gravitate to. It's not in all that many fragrances, but a great blackberry note. Mm. Nice. Rose water. Uh, there are a few fragrances I have that have rose water as a note. Uh, I do actually enjoy the way that comes across. Pink pepper, of course, in so many fragrances. And then hibiscus seed. I'm not sure how that would come across. I have never smelled hibiscus seed. Hibiscus seed? Hibiscus, hibiscus, hibiscus. And the last fragrance, Marbella. It has a top of pink pepper, black currant, and Bulgarian rose, mid of peony, jasmine, and green tea, and a base of musk, amber, and peach. This one, again, looking at the note breakdown, technically unisex, but looks like it may lean or shade a little bit toward the feminine side of things. Obviously, I can't say that for certain without having smelled it, but just looking at the note breakdown, that's what it seems like to me. Of those, uh, Luco Mori, which again, mispronouncing, I apologize, seems like the most interesting one to me. All right, guys, that's going to do it for yet another week in fragrance. Oh boy. You will not see another video of this week in fragrance for at least a week and a half because I am actually going to be on vacation. But don't worry, I have uh, videos that I've filmed that will be coming out while I'm on vacation, so you won't even know it. It's gonna be great. And then when I get back, I'm sure there will be 20 fragrances that have been announced since I did go on vacation. And then you will get another This Week in Fragrance video. And I bet that one will have four more blue fragrances for you guys. Even more compliment getters. It's gonna be insane. It's gonna be great. This is the greatest thing of all time. All right, guys. 
Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. And I'll see you all again tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.